Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about getting customers. So if you're new in business, you're just getting started, this is gonna be a good one for you. And if you're existing and you're trying to take your company to the next level, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. So many new window cleaners, it's absolutely amazing. Now, this podcast has been going on for six years, so there's content, tons of it. Anywhere podcasts are available, listen when you're out on the job, walking around, doing whatever, or uh, it's also on YouTube if you want to have it playing in the background. Uh, unfortunately, you have a face for radio, so podcasting is always more popular. Uh, but if it's not your first time here and you're an OG, yeah, you, what's up? It is because of you, cool kid, that I exist in the world. And if you want to be a cool kid, uh, shameless plug of the day, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and I want to put your orders in. So many of you have let me put those orders in. Um, you've got questions for me. I am the only person you call and talk to and every order goes through me and that's amazing. Uh, literally costs you nothing extra. I make it amazingly easy and uh, you are helping me out. Literally, it is a virtual high five of awesomeness. So if you ever decide that you want to do some good in this world, let me put your orders in. I want to be a rep. My number is 862-312-2026. Also, if, it's on, if you're on YouTube, it's always on the screen. Um, and also, you're a nerd in window cleaning like me. So get the subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It is an awesome magazine. Been around since 1986, by the way. Uh, full color Real magazine shows up at your door every single month. Plus, you get, of course, the window cleaning limited edition stickers to put on all your stuff and join the culture of window cleanings. If you're all in, you are a cool kid. And by the way, uh, I have limited edition cool kid stickers I give away if anybody mentions that. So if you want one of the stickers and I put an order in, be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Just click save this cart and then say, um, throw me a sticker, yo, or whatever kind of hipper talk than mine and i'll make sure to put a sticker in there for you too so anyway there you go shameless plugs all done i hope you're having an awesome awesome uh season of window cleaning so far this year's been super weird uh it's 2023 uh if you're watching this or listening to this afterwards and this uh spring was extremely slow starting weird it's gone long into summer it's been a weird year lots of rain all that stuff hopefully everything's starting to regulate a little bit more for you so um but one of the big things we're always chasing is customers right if you're new in window cleaning you're probably thinking how do i get customers like how do i find them where do they come from how do i convince people to let me do a thing right if you've been in business you're like okay well i got a bunch of customers i need more ideas i need more concepts i need to understand customers and i need more of them so you're always looking for more customers always no matter if you've been doing this for 20 years or 20 days you need customers and it's tricky right the problem is is there's a difference between advertising and marketing People sometimes will do marketing without advertising and they go, man, no one's called me in two days. And you can ask the question, well, what did you do to get them? I waited by the phone, man, every call, if you know, they were calling like, I, oh man, I don't. If you're not doing it, if you're not out there hustling, if you're not actually physically trying to get customers, they won't come. It's very, very, extraordinary <laughs> that it actually happens that way so here, here's the thing once you're in business for a while the momentum ball rolls you have people that just genuinely call you from referrals and everything else but a lot of the time they're calling from the marketing side marketing is passive sales or advertising is active right there's a difference and you have to do both because one gets them in and one puts you in front of them when they look for you, right? Sales versus marketing, advertising versus marketing. There's a difference. And that's what we're talking about today. It's the two differences and what you can do. Now, I will put this out there. 
If you're new, or you're sitting around twiddling your thumbs, or you are out of the field and you're in the office, it is absolutely your job and your only job to get customers. Now, if you don't have eight hours of work to do, do eight hours of work. Like, do eight hours of sales. Do eight hours of advertising. Do everything you possibly can and put in the time. If you don't, those are the type of people who are like, ah, man, it's just my market's too flooded and I can't sell anything. It's because you haven't done anything to get it. By the way, if you don't want to go out there and do a bunch of stuff and you're cool with where you are, don't, I'm just some dummy that sits in front of a green screen. Uh, if you didn't know it was a green screen. But it doesn't matter. You don't have to do all the stuff I'm talking about. But if you want to get this to the next level, if you want to have more income and more customers and more stability, you want to build the company, you have to do both. And we'll start with advertising. Advertising is sales. Advertising is the fancy word for sales, right? A lot of people think advertising and marketing kind of is the same thing. Uh, you put an ad out. Marketing is not, an ad could be in marketing, but we're mainly talking about sales in marketing separate, right? And a big thing goes right now, door knocking. I hate door knocking. Don't do door knocking. Like, if you disagree, tell me you disagree. But man, I hate door knocking so much. It's the new trend, people door knocking. And it's absolutely uh, odd to me. It's absolutely odd to me. Because I'll explain door knocking. Door knocking is something that you normally wouldn't see in a luxury business. We are a luxury business. No one is coming up to your door in a suit going, hey, I'm from the Bugatti dealer and I'd like to talk to you about Bugatti. No. You get it from like spider, you know, pest control, roofers and solar. I mean, you get a lot of door knocking stuff and you get from those things. Not in a luxury business. It's a new trend now is this door knocking stuff. Everybody's like, man, I can close tons of stuff. Yeah, you can. You could get customers. If you want to do door knocking, do it. I hate it. I don't do door knocking. It's not my image of my company or putting it out there or any of that stuff. There's other ways you can get things that uh, get a different type of customer. And I could be more efficient with it. Door knocking, if you're good, you can get customers. Will they be repeat customers? Will they find your experience what they want? Are you selling them on price? What are you doing in door knocking? But in sales, sales is being active and door knocking falls into active, right? You're out there getting it. I don't do door knocking ever. Don't like it. I don't like to go to somebody's house and do that. It's not for me. So everything I've ever done in all of my years of 16 years of having a company has not been door knocking. The new trend on TikTok and everything else is door knocking and that's maybe what you're doing if you're new. But in advertising, it's actually being active and putting stuff out there, right? Sales in general is you going to get the sale. You talking to the people. You putting things out there for them, right? Advertising and sales would be like Facebook marketing, Facebook ads. I love Facebook ads. I know Facebook isn't the thing it used to be, but listen, Facebook is a targeted um, social media program. TikTok, cool, have a TikTok. You barely will get customers from it because TikTok goes all the way across the world. You get likes from England. That doesn't help you out unless you live in England, right? AdWords, AdWords are good. We'll talk about those in a second, but AdWords is gotta be focused down. Facebook, the way that you can do it is so targeted, you can get people in your area. You can get people who have certain interests and behaviors and likes. You could talk to people who just are your target market, your click-through rate. I mean, you're talking a click or a call could be 50 cents if you're doing amazing up to like a couple bucks. That's crazy. If I said, hey, I got somebody who wants to um, book your window cleaning service, would you give me $2? You'd be like, what? Yes. That's advertising. That's Facebook. That's pay-per-click. In Facebook ads, you can target things like you can't anything else. And it's active. You're out there taking that information and you're finding them. 
You're being active. You're selling them. And there's a whole process that I'm not going to necessarily get into the how to do sales. I've done episodes on that. I hope you go back and watch or listen to them. The thing on how is it has to be done right. People sometimes just go, well, I got this awesome thing I made. You think it's awesome. It's not awesome. You've not asked anybody else. And if you have, you've maybe asked your wife and they went, yeah, no, it's not. I have people send me stuff all the time. And um, I try not to uh, poop on everything that people send me. Uh, but I like to be, I like to point out the negatives more than the positives. And sometimes people are so proud of stuff and I feel so bad. But in business, you could be as proud as you want and it can still be a garbage thing, right? Ads, websites, logos. Um, there's a guy in the industry that I don't even think watches this. That I've tried to talk to uh, multiple times out on Facebook. He's got the absolute most awful image uh, logo on the planet. It's confusing. You can't see or read the name. It's awful. He even redid it and it's still awful. The first one was way worse. It's, it, is, it looks like it's like hieroglyphics. It's, it's awful. But he made it himself. He's super proud of it. And you go, hey, what I would do is suggestion, just do this and this and this. And they're like, yeah, no, uh, you know, my customers can see it. Cool. All right. Don't be open then. But if you're open, advertising has to be done right. Sales has to be done right. There's a process to it. If you're not split testing that, get into that. Watch the episodes. I swear I talk about it more on that side. Facebook marketing is awesome. Another thing you can do in Facebook that is active, sales, is find mommy groups. which We call them mommy groups. But if you are in a certain city, just type moms of that city into Facebook and you'll find groups. There are tons of local groups. People love local groups. It's the same thing with Nextdoor. If you haven't heard of Nextdoor, Nextdoor is what's called a list serve. A list serve is a server of specific people. Nextdoor allows people of a neighborhood to be in on that neighborhood. And then each neighborhood has kind of their own little group. It's like Facebook groups kind of on steroids, right? But it's great because if you're in a neighborhood or you want to get into a neighborhood, the people of that neighborhood talk like, oh man, I had this person. They were awesome. Well, you instantly have cred because they feel like they're friends. Oh, this is my neighbor. Even if you've never met them, they're still your neighbor, right? Groups are the same thing in Facebook. Just going in there and putting content in there from your business page really helps. When somebody asks about something, you're helping and not just selling. If you just go into every group and go, F window cleaning, $50, like people will kick you, you're spammy, no one trusts you because they see they're just ads. No one trusts an ad, but they trust somebody once they get that intuition. If you help somebody with a bunch of information first, they will come to you. Like if somebody is just like, hey, has anybody tried to clean their windows? Like, what do you what do you use? What's your solution for cleaning windows? You know, talking about doing it themselves, jump in and tell them what you use. I'll go in there perfectly and be like, hey, if it, I own a window cleaning company for 16 years and what we use on the professional level is Dawn in water. That's it. It's it's super fast. People are scared to do that because they're like, I can't give away my secrets. That's not your secret. You don't clean the way you do because you use Dawn. You clean the way you do because of the tools and the technique and the experience and the eight hours a day. And the, they're not replicating that. They're not. So what ends up happening is because you've offered the information for free, they see that you're a value. And eventually they're like, you know what? I tried it this weekend, the solution thing. Like it's better, but man, just what would you charge me to do it? Oh, yeah, hey, I'd love to get it. Absolutely. Zig Ziglar said it. If you ever want to get everything you want in life, go out there and give everybody everything they want in life, right? Give away all the information for free. That's the way you get rich. I'm telling you. By the way, I do a podcast for free for six years. Kind of, kind of the same thing, right? I try to put out a lot of information in the hopes that somebody gets all this information, you know what? Man, I got a place in order. You know, I'm gonna send something to Jersey. 
dude, I've gotten a ton of good ideas from Jersey or it's just nice to listen to them or whatever, man. I'm giving back to them, right? That's what I do. Most of the people, I have to say probably every one of the people that I do private coaching with come from the podcast. They get so much stuff that they're like, hey, you know what? Your podcasts are great, but I want to specifically work on me. Sweet. Let's do it, right? Give away information. People come back. That's Facebook ads. That's targeting to them. That's targeting to the groups. That's doing the free stuff. You can go into groups and just search things in your area. It costs you zero dollars and you're doing, you're doing active advertising. You're doing sales by doing that. If you're paying and you want to put out those type of ads, Facebook ads are great. AdWords is another one. AdWords puts it in through Google. Google owns YouTube. Google owns a whole bunch of stuff. It's super simple to do. Super simple to do. But it costs money. But the thing is, is it only costs money when something doesn't work. If you buy a TV, it doesn't make you money. So it costs you money. If you buy a pure water system, it doesn't cost you any money. You're investing that money. It's a whole different thing, just like ads. I always tell people this. If you don't, if you're like, ah, man, I just don't have the money for ads. But how are you going to get, what? You don't spend money. If you're spending more money than you're making, then you've obviously done something wrong. Then yes, you're spending money. But you don't spend money on ads. You're investing in the work. A big concept, if you will. I always tell people this. If it's absolutely written in gold, and it's lawyers and um, courts and everything. And I say, listen, if you give me $100,000 today, if you give me $100,000 on Friday, I'm going to give you $200,000 back. Absolutely legit. No scam. It's been proven. It's it. 100% guaranteed. Not one person listening to this would be like, yeah, dude, I don't have $100,000. Like, Ugh. I don't wanna, I don't, I can't spend $100,000. Not one person would say that. Not one person would say, man, I don't have $100,000 to spend. Maybe most of you don't have $100,000 lying around, but guess what? You'd go and do everything you can to get as much money as possible, right? If they said, hey, for every dollar you give me, I'll give you two back on Friday, you would empty your bank account and live on ramen for a week because you knew it was coming back. That's an investment. No one spends all their money and buys the most expensive TV, taps out their bank account and goes, yeah. That's not an investment, that's spending money, right? Advertising is that. When you spend money, air quotes, you get a certain amount of back. Eventually, the more split testing and, and good you do, what you do by putting that out there is you're getting it back. You spend say $1,000, you should be getting 5,000 back. Well, then you're not spending 1,000, you're actually making 4,000. If I could make 4,000 by pushing a button, I would do that. I would do that as much as possible, as much as I could handle, right? That is how you do your advertising, your advertising and sales side. If you're doing paid, you cover more area. If you're doing groups, if you're doing content, if you're doing door knocking, that type of thing, it's time. You have time or you have money. Usually you don't have both at the same time. So usually if somebody's doing really heavy Facebook ads, AdWords, that type of thing, they're not doing door knocking or whatever. They don't have the same, unless there's a dedicated person for that, right? But that is the active side. Just like EDDM, I talk about EDDM all the time. You have to do it right. I can't tell you how many people have been like, yeah, I did it, it didn't work. Oh man, how many pieces did you send out? Uh, I spent 5,000 pieces out. Oh, dang. Every every week for three weeks? No, no, I just sent 5,000 pieces out. Oh, that's wrong. You, you did it wrong. You wasted money. What? No, I, I got an ad and no, no. No, that's not how it works. If you think you know how everything works without doing the research in that, then you're just going to be wasting money. I won't get on EDDM again. That's another... Uh, episode, but if you're doing EDDM, it has to be done right, just like everything. If you put a Facebook ad out there and you're not split testing, meaning changing it all the time, then you're also not doing that right. If you're not doing it right, you're just wasting money at that point. So do that right. But the other side of finding customers in general is the marketing. 
Marketing is the passive and you have to do both. I love the passive side. Passive side for anyone that's wondering, that is um, like your website and SEO and um, um, it is uh, uh, reviews. It is anything that people find you. It's just out there, it's floating out there, right? People could say, well, yeah, ads are kind of like that. Well, if you kind of put an ad out there, that's more targeted but yeah, kind of an ad is sort of marketing too. But marketing is passive versus sales, which is active, right? And the marketing side, the passive side, the great things that are out there, first and foremost is reviews. This is the second best thing you can possibly do for your company is get a ton of reviews. It's the second best thing. I'll tell you the first in a second, but the second best thing is reviews. Now people go, well, yeah, I got 12 reviews, they're five stars. Awesome, 12 reviews don't do anything. 100 reviews start to do something. Two, three, 500 reviews, now you're doing something. If you see 500 people say, this company's amazing, and two of them gave you low ratings, I'd be like, oh, dude, this is the company, man. You instantly win over anybody else because you have more reviews. How do people search you? How do people search stuff? They go on Google and go, window cleaners near me, right? What happens is you pull up the locals, it shows where you are. If you have a Google My Place and there's reviews, you will blow everybody else out of the water, right? Reviews are huge. Now you can actually actively get reviews. I think. 95% of people out there do not chase reviews as much as they should. As long as you don't upset Google, your reviews are gonna be there for a very, very long time. They will be continually getting bigger, continually being better, and continually getting you new business. Once you're at such a level, you're the highest rated company in your area. That's an advertising thing. Now you can put that in everything else. They push it because they think that it's a legitimate thing and your reviews do social accreditation. They also give you basically a referral. Referral is if I trust Johnny and Johnny says use you, I use you because I trust Johnny, that means I trust you. That's where reviews or why referrals work so well. Reviews, if 500 people said that you're awesome, I gotta believe 500 people. That's not just your family members. If you got 12 people, well, that's probably you know your family. So reviews, chase them, nice job, use nice job. It's a great service that uh, basically helps you collect those reviews. You see these guys with these giant amount of reviews, it's, a credit. it's, it's amazing to see a company with 500 reviews, you know that they're absolutely legit. If you saw a window cleaning company with 500 reviews, you'd be like, dang, these guys are huge. Reviews are huge and people don't use them like marketing that they should. They are absolutely marketing for you. It's passive. It is putting them out there and just building your company up on this pedestal. You have to have a good website. A website, people are like, yeah, well, I got a website. I built it on Wix. Okay. Um, that could technically work, but try to get a website built. There's a lot of things that go on a website, not just pictures on the back end. On the front end, it has to convey the right message. It has to tell people when they go there everything they need to know, get them curious and hungry to book you. We use the state-of-the-art equipment, which is cool. Me and you like equipment. We like state-of-the-art equipment and I have, if you saw behind my screen right now, I have seven, eight, eight water-fed poles. I have a zero pier. I have a, a zero um, uh, pack. I have, a whole, that's just my office. The office next to this, I got uh, a Max Plus and I, I got all this stuff in my office. I'm surrounded by great, amazing equipment. You and I like that. Customers don't care for this details. All they wanna do is, we use Waterfed, that's your line, that's it, right? These are marketing side of the website, it has to be done right. But the number one thing that you could possibly do and I know, I know a lot of you who are watching know exactly what I'm gonna say. 
because I beat it like a dead horse and I know uh, most of you are still not doing this or you're skimping out or you're using someone or something that you shouldn't be. But it's SEO. SEO by far is the number one thing you could ever, ever do for your company as far as getting customers. Now, I know people always go, well, referrals, are, yeah, referrals will always be 50% of what you're doing if you're doing it right. That's awesome. But referrals, you didn't do anything for. I did a good job. Yeah, okay, but they love the experience more than the job. It's a whole other thing. That's something different, but that is your customers out there doing that, not you. The best thing you could ever spend money on is SEO, and here's why. When you take a website that is good, that tells people what they need, it gets them to call, it gets them excited and hungry, it could be the most amazing website ever. How do, are people finding that? If you don't know how the web world works, right, the world wide web, I should say, if you don't know how the internet works, just because you have a good site does not mean people will look at it or find it or search it or type in window cleaning near me and find you. Everybody thinks that people are out there searching for your actual name, your actual window cleaning company. Well, people like me, they search, they don't remember you. Yes, people do, but not everybody. And most people don't. And especially new people. New people are just looking for a window cleaner. They're basically asking the world, recommend a window cleaner to me. Tell me who I should be choosing. There are hundreds of window cleaners in an area that's probably in, you know, an hour or two of yours if you're in a big city. You go, well, nah, actually there's only three companies. In, okay, three that you know of. And that's in a local, local area. Guaranteeing there's more than that. But say there's 10. Why would they pick you? How would they find you? Well, you know, I think my results speak for themselves. No, they don't. Who are they talking to? How are your results talking to new people? SEO. SEO means that when I type in window cleaning, I pop up. Now, I have to pay for SEO, obviously. And again, talk to Monk SEO, by far my favorite. Obviously, you guys know that. Uh, call them. They're, they're super good. Bobby is amazing to work with. But plans change. I'm not going to tell you pricing. It's none of my business between you guys. But what happens is, is you pay them to get that ranked. Then it ranks, meaning eventually with enough time and enough active things that they're doing on the back end to get that there, the crawlers on the website, Google goes, hey, this is a great website, let's push it up. Now all of a sudden, when I search window cleaning, Austin, Texas, I'm gonna pull you up as the first listing. You also have now 500 reviews. You're the first one on Google. Who am I calling? If I click on that website and your website is amazing, they're calling you. If you answer the phone right away, every call, if you do your bidding over the phone, book them right then and there, within five minutes of that person typing your name, because you've done all this, they find you. They don't call anyone else. They don't call any of your competitors. They don't test anybody else. They don't get anything. It's done. I don't think people understand the, the specific side of how speed in all of this works. If I go, man, my windows are dirty, let me check. And I get the window cleaning to me. These guys are cool. Let me look at the, oh, man, the website's cool. Look at all the stuff. Yeah, pictures are good. These guys look legit. Nice. Uh, and I click and I call. It's done. My windows aren't clean, but it's off my plate. That's what people want. That's how you get customers. But you have to pay to get SEO. Can you do SEO on your own? Sure. Can it be anywhere close to paid SEO? No. I, I truly, truly believe that. I paid for SEO for a very, very long time and had amazing results. There's bad SEO companies out there though. That's the downside. That's the crappiest part about SEO is there's like thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of SEO companies out there and 9,990 of them are garbage. I know so many people who get screwed, they pay a bunch of money and by the time they figure out that they get screwed, it's just too late. If you wanna do one change, and you say, I don't wanna do Facebook ads right now, I don't wanna do any of that stuff. I want to put money into something that works. SEO will change your life. It will change your company. It will put you into a whole nother level. You've never, ever seen something when you do SEO. And I'm not talking about any SEO. Obviously, I can't speak for the SEO company if you're using somebody different. I'm just talking about Monk SEO. That's just for me. But 
if you have an SEO company and they're doing good, put money into them. If you know people are finding you because of your SEO, invest in that SEO. It doesn't matter the company if they're great. But this, of all things, is a place that you should not ever, ever, ever go, hey, somebody called me and goes, hey, would you like to be on the first page of Google? And it's $99. Yeah, what the heck? You're wasting your money. Do not skimp on SEO, but get SEO. It's, it's the changer of everything. It'll help you get more customers. It'll help you blow up everything that you're trying to into a giant company, stronger company. Anyway. There you go. I apologize at the end. Got a little bit uh, like an ad for Monk. Great guys. I've known them forever. I've dealt with them and they've given me amazing results. So that's another thing. If you want to use them, use them. Don't use them. Doesn't matter. But SEO companies, man. Uh, I get so many people who are like, yeah, I spent like $10,000 on this company over a year and nothing happened. It's like, yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. SEO is amazing when it's good SEO. Anyway, okay. I'm off my high horse. Uh, I just want to thank you guys uh, for listening every single week. And I really, really, really want to thank you, uh, the people who let me be your rep. That's what I do, what I do. It's how I live. It is everything to me that I get to put orders in and answer questions and just be a resource to so many of you. So thank you. And I'm always looking for new customers for that. Um, I know you're buying supplies. I know you're getting into window cleaning. I know you're buying water fed, squeegees, towels, soaps, whatever you're getting windowcleaner.com we have the best selection and best support and you can call me direct you can put everything in your cart once you're logged in just click save this cart in the checkout screen and you can tell me yo jersey everything's in my cart i can pull it up put it in i literally hit go instead of you and it costs you nothing extra and i get credit for it or if you're in busy text me like jersey i need a gallon of gg4 and a 48 pack of towels i'll go sweet is the address one two three good yes I'll send it. I can save your card on file, your address is on file, everything. It makes it so absolutely easy and that's how I make my cheddar. So please give me a try. Uh, 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. And get the subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. AWCMAG.com, literally go check it out. Uh, get a subscription. There's also stuff on the site you can buy. Do that, I see it when it comes in and uh, I really, really appreciate it. So until next week, Go out there and find some customers, but more importantly, go out and be epic.